So what, what must we do? Matthew 9 verse 38 said, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. And obviously the harvest represents souls. Okay? Because the only thing we take to heaven are souls. Okay? You're not going to take your car, your business, or something, your money. The only thing you take to you with heaven are souls. Okay? And the Bible says the wise man um, seeks to, to save souls. Okay? Okay, uh, go up please again. So, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. Send out. Say pray again. So, we need to know how to pray. Okay? How to pray for the laborers. If you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit always prays. So, when you pray in tongues, you will be praying perfect prayers already. Okay? But how are you a laborer? You want to know how to be a good laborer. Okay, next. So, pray. So, we're going to read 2 Thessalonians 1. Okay? Which talks about how to pray. And it talks about pray constantly for the laborers, seeing that Jesus' return is near. Because Paul talks about Jesus' return. And then he says, in view of Jesus returning, pray this prayer all the more. And how do we know Jesus is returning? Okay, that's an, that's, you can talk so long about that, because Jesus is definitely returning. Okay? If you look at last week's sermon, that was a sermon about praying in tongues, but also about the sign of the time. Okay? The vaccine is a sign that Jesus is returning. Okay? So now, 1 Thessalonians 1 says, Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Next. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So a laborer is one who stands, stands in faith. And when you stand in faith, you, your faith grows exceedingly. Because what does the Bible say? When you read the Word, your faith grows. Okay? Think about it like this. Faith is like muscles. Okay? We all have the same measure of muscles. Okay? You all have the same amount of muscles. But some of us, some of our muscles are bigger or more developed because you exercise those muscles. Okay? So, the Bible says all of us have been given the same measure of faith. But your faith can increase. How? Through praying in tongues, through reading the Word of God. Your faith, your muscles can get bigger. Okay? But it's still the same measure, but it can be stronger, bigger. Okay? Also, when you make your muscles bigger, the fat or the doubt gets less. Okay? <laughs> okay? Because muscles are more metabolic. They, they, they take more energy. Okay? And the more muscles you have, the less fat you have. So the more faith you increase, the less doubt you have. Okay? Because the problem, most people have at least a measure of faith. But then they have lots of doubt. Okay? But if you have exercised your faith and you, and you pray in tongues, what does the Bible say? Decreases the doubt. Okay? So, laborers are those who exceed in faith, they increase in faith, they stand, because when you're in faith, you're standing. And they loving. Love abounds to each other. Next. Verse 4. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So the Bible says, we are not redeemed or we're not protected from not having persecutions. Okay? You have persecutions for the word of God's sake, and you have persecution for living holy. Okay? Which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. So, manifest evidence. So, when all people speak well of you, then that's bad evidence against you. Okay? If people are speaking bad of you because you're a Christian or because you're living holy, then that's evidence that there's righteous judgment of God 
Alleluia. Next. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. That's why you need to pray for your enemies. Because those who attack the righteousness of God in Christ, they will be judged. God avenges you. Okay. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. So this is going to happen any day, any minute. Okay? Jesus will be revealed with His mighty angels in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what's, how do you obey the gospel? You believe it. Okay? And how do you know God? It's a gift. You receive it. Okay? You receive the eternal life because that's knowing God. If you believe in Jesus, He gives you the knowledge of God, which is eternal life. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction. And how are you punished? You will from the presence of the Lord. So when you're taken away from the presence of the Lord, that's the ultimate punishment, the ultimate destruction. Because Jesus is light. Jesus is hope. Jesus is love. So if you remove from Jesus' presence, you have no, no hope, you have no love, the ultimate destruction. Okay. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And glory is manifest goodness. So you have no more goodness. There's no, it's just bad. Verse 10. When He comes in that day, to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Amen. Amen. Therefore, so what did we read now? Because Jesus is coming back, okay? Because He will be glorified in the saints, okay? Because Jesus is coming to fetch us. Therefore, therefore, in view of this, Pray always, we pray, so Paul prays, always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this. So this is in italics, you can read in the Bible. So that means it's not necessarily there, okay? So you can say worthy of calling, okay? So this can be this calling or the calling or your calling, okay? So it would count you worthy of the calling. So what do you pray? What's the first thing you pray? That you are worthy of calling, worthy of the calling. Next, that you fulfill all the good pleasure of goodness. His is not there, but, it, but it's obviously His goodness, okay? And fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and, and the work of faith with power. Those are three things you pray for. You pray for to be worthy of your calling to fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith with power. Okay, next. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. It's because when, if you're fulfilling all His goodness, His good pleasure, if you are worthy of the calling, amen, then what happens? You will glorify Jesus. Amen. May be glorified in you and you in Christ. So you are glorified in Christ. According to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So how does this happen? According to the grace. What's grace? Unmerited favor. So again, what does this mean? God gives you the grace to be worthy of the calling. Amen. Amen. God gives you the grace to fulfill all His good pleasure. God gives you the grace to fulfill the work of the faith. And what did we say faith was? Something God has already done. And it's a work of faith, which means you speak it. You speak, because faith is what? Faith is speaking. Amen. So you're proclaiming what God has already done in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So you proclaim what God has already done in your life, and if He tells you to do something, then you're obedient and do it. Okay. And how does this come? Through God gives you the grace. Amen. That's why everything we do, marriage, uh, children, teaching our children, business, um, 
exercise, whatever. It's grace-based. We receive the grace of our Lord. Amen. His unmerited favor. So we ask for His unmerited favor in our lives. Then, Ephesians 1 says this exactly the same thing. Okay? But it talks about how do we ask for it as well. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord. What did we hear in the, in the previous one? 1 Thessalonians? Their faith exceeded, increased. Okay? So the same way Paul hears that the Ephesians' faith increases. Okay? How, how are their faith increasing? Through hearing and hearing the Word of God, hearing the Word of Christ. So they're reading their Bible. Okay? They're praying in tongues. And your love for all the saints. So, previous one, we saw that the Thessalonians, love abounded to all their brothers. Okay? So the same way we see here that a laborer is standing in faith, they're increasing in faith, and they are loving. Okay? They're loving all the saints, all their brothers. And do not cease to give thanks for you. Okay? Making mention of you in my prayers. Okay, so how do you pray for the laborers? Because Jesus said, pray for the laborers. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. Okay. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Okay. In the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So that's what we pray. When you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, the eyes of your understanding, of your imagination is enlightened. Like the twelve wells and the seventy palm trees who see, who see, who have visions. Okay. That you may know what is the hope of His calling. What did we see previously? Worthy of His calling. But how, how is it connected? Worthy of His calling and the hope of His calling. So what's hope? Hope is a positive, confident expectation of good. So you know that God has a good calling for you and you ask that you have a vision so that you know what is this good calling. Then you ask for the grace. You receive the grace to be worthy of fulfilling this calling. Okay. Then what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance? In the saints. What is this? To fulfill all His goodness, good pleasure. Okay? Because what's glory? Glory is the manifestation of His goodness. So, we need to fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness. Okay? And how, how does this come? We know it's richly given to us. Okay? So we can fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness because... We see and know the riches of the manifestation of His goodness, of His inheritance in the saints. Because we will read now in Ephesians 3, how, how does all of this come? Through the working in us, the power that works in us. Because where, where is all this riches of His goodness? It's in the saints. It's in the church. It's in us. Amen. And when you read the Word of God, when you pray in tongues, it comes out, it manifests. Amen. Next. But it comes through having that vision. Amen. That vision. Because in provision, provision, you have a vision. If you guys read provision, the provision is in the vision. Okay. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe? According to the working of His mighty power. What did the previous one say? We need to fulfill all the work of the faith. Okay? We need to fulfill all the work of the faith. And here it says, so that we know the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. Because faith and believing, yeah? And exceeding power. So what has Jesus already done for us? Okay? What has He already done for us? And then we partake of that. Amen. The working of His mighty power. Next. Okay. Which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. Next. Far 
above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Next. And He put all things under His feet and gave Him to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who falls all in all. So, the palm trees need to gather together. Together. Why? Because the fullness, the fullness of Jesus is where the gathering together of the palm trees take place. Because the palm trees gathering together is His body. Amen. Which is His body, the fullness of Him who falls all in all. Hallelujah. Okay, next. So, when you know and see, then you have the provision. Okay? Because we prayed for in Ephesians 1, what do you pray for? That they can know and see. That the laborers, that you, you are laborers, and the other laborers who you pray for, that they can know and see. Know and see what? That they can know and see Jesus, okay, the knowledge of Jesus, that they can know and see the calling, the inheritance of the goodness of God, and the exceeding greatness of His power, the work of faith. So that they can have visions. Then, with or by the Spirit of grace, you will fulfill it. Okay. Because why, when you're worthy of the calling, why? Why are you worthy of the calling? Because of the grace that you've received. Why are you able to fulfill? Why are you able to fulfill all the good pleasure of God? Through the grace of the Spirit, the Spirit of grace. Why are you able to partake or do the work of faith? Okay? When you say do, why are you able to speak the work of faith? Because you're receiving the grace of the Spirit of grace. Amen. So what are the three things you pray for? Okay, you guys following, are you listening? What are the three things you pray for? Know and see the hope of His calling. What's, so that you can be worthy of the or your calling. Because when you have the vision, when you have the vision of the hope of His calling, when you have the vision of the hope of His calling, then you will have the provision. You see, you guys seeing this, this vision, provision, okay? So when you have the vision, you receive the grace. Because God doesn't give you a vision if He doesn't intend to give you the grace to fulfill the vision. So if God gives you a vision to be a, a dancer, He's not going to not give you the ability to be able to do it. Okay? You will need to ask for wisdom. That's why you ask for the spirit of wisdom also and revelation so that you know how to train or whatever or meet the right people. Next. Know and see the riches of the glory. And what's the glory? Manifestation of His goodness. Of His inheritance in the saints. So in us. In the church. And then what happens? When you know and see, when you know and see the riches of His goodness, the manifestation of His goodness in us, and in the church, then fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness. So where is the good pleasure? The good pleasure, God's pleased when the preaching of the Word goes forth. Okay? But also, God works in you for His good pleasure. He works in you so that you can fulfill His good pleasure. We'll read that verse now. Okay, but next. Know and see the exceeding greatness of of His power toward us who believe, according to the working of His mighty, complete strength. So power is complete strength. Okay? Because if you have this vision to fulfill something, you need the complete strength of God to do it. Okay? And what's this? The work of the faith in power. So if you know and see, if you have the vision of what Jesus has already done for you, you will be able to fulfill all the work of the faith in power. Amen. Let's say this faith is that you are believing for God to... That, well, healing is... One, I want to use something else, but this is use healing. To believe in God to heal your back. Your back has been broken. So you have a vision of how Jesus took all of that back pain on Him. Amen. And then, according to the working of His might, so how Jesus took that upon Him, and how the resurrection power then comes into your back, or something like that, you have a vision to receive the work of the faith, of what is already accomplished in power. 
Amen. Resurrection power. Amen. Okay. Why? Why are you praying these three things? Why are you praying it for the laborers for yourself? That the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in Christ. So you are glorified in Christ. Amen. Amen. According to the grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved preferential treatment of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. So when you pray these things already, God supplies you the grace. Amen. He's supplying you the grace. Because when we pray, we pray in faith. Amen. When we pray, we pray in faith. Because we know we've already received. Amen. You're not praying for God to do something. You're praying because God has already done it. Amen. So when we pray, God has already given us the grace. Amen. So we're thanking Him for the unearned, undeserved favor. So it says, according to all these things happen, according to His grace. So what do we want? We want the grace to increase. Amen. Because if the grace is increased, what, it, what does that mean? All the above things will be better, will increase. Amen. And how does grace increase? 2 Peter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So when your knowledge of Jesus is increased, the grace increases. Amen. Because who is Jesus? Jesus is grace. Amen. So if your knowledge of the Spirit of grace increases, grace increases. Amen. Next. As His divine power has given to us all things. Say all things. All. Not just some things, all things. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. To life. Notice not to when we die one day. To life right now. He's given us all things. Through how? Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. So how do you receive all this power? Through the knowledge. How does the grace increase through the knowledge? Amen. Hallelujah. And how do you increase this knowledge? Through reading the Word. Reading the Word of God. Through praying in tongues. Amen. And how must you read the Word? You read the Word to see Jesus. To study. When you read the Word, you're studying, you're looking for Jesus. So when you open the Word of God, you're not just reading it to get through the Bible. Okay, I've read my two chapters today. You're reading the Word to see Jesus in the Word. Okay? Because you have the Word of God, but behind the Word of God, or on top of it, you have the Spirit of the Lord. And you want to see the Spirit of the Lord. Because when you see the Spirit of the Lord, you receive the visions. Okay? You receive the visions to be worthy of the calling. You receive the visions to fulfill all His good pleasure of goodness. When you receive the visions, when you read the Bible to see Jesus, what happens? You fulfill all the work of faith. And what's faith? What is already done. So you fulfill the work of faith. You receive that blessing in your life. Okay? In power through the Holy Spirit. So Ephesians 3 verse 14 says, Okay, so what? When you read and you study the Word of God, what are you specifically looking at also? You're always looking at what the Bible is about. Jesus loves us. Okay. So you're looking at the love of Christ. Amen. You're studying the Word to see the love of Christ. Because Ephesians 3 verse 14, Paul continues this prayer. And now, what does he say? He says, For this reason I bow my knees, so I pray. Okay? I pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Next. That He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, His manifested goodness, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. Next. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. Next. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So when you read the Word of God, what are you looking for? You're looking at the love of Christ. You're looking at 
God's intense love for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, so when you receive this knowledge of God, that He loves you. Amen. When you know that God loves you, when, Jesus, when you know that Jesus loves you, now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. How? According to the power that works in us. Because the inheritance is in the saints, in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Next. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, next one. So, Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. Because we said, it's for, to fulfill all the good pleasure of goodness, of His goodness. And how does it come according to the grace of God? So God gives you the grace. Okay? God gives you the grace and then it works in you and it gives you the grace so that to will and to do for His good pleasure happens. Amen. So if you don't, so let's put it in an example. So if you have a desire to work with uh, with people on the street, okay, then that desire comes from God, okay. What is He doing? He's giving you a willingness, and He's giving you the grace to work with people on the street for His good pleasure, okay. But if you are someone who hates people on the street, then that's definitely not your calling. So don't go and talk to people on the street, okay? Or if God is giving you the grace to, and He's giving you then the will, and He works in you to talk to children and help children, like maybe Sunday school or something, then what happens? Then, if you do that, you're fulfilling the good pleasure of the grace that He's given to you, okay? But if you are someone that says, no, I hate children, then God has not given you the grace all the willingness and good pleasure to go, speak to the children. But then, if He gives you the desire, okay? If He gives you the desire, and He works in you the willingness to go to children and spend time with children in Sunday school, whatever, be a teacher, or whatever, and you don't do that, what happens? Then, the grace that He's given you was for nothing, okay? You didn't use the grace He gave you, okay? But if you use it, then you fulfill, you do His good pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, next. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in Him. So God has given you the grace, He's given you the will to, to do something for His good pleasure. Amen. He's given you the grace because He created you. You are His workmanship. Amen. And what do you do? You just walk in them. You walk in them. So you follow the willingness and the desire He's given to you. Okay. Hallelujah. Hi guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and to like the video so that more people can watch it and to share with your friends and loved ones so that we can get the gospel out. And put on your notification bell so that you do not miss any new videos. See you again.